Welcome back to Golden Rule Radio, your weekly recap of the precious metals markets and the markets that move the metals. The tug of war continues. Not a whole lot of price action this week, as Miles is going to get into here shortly in regards to gold, silver, and platinum. Yeah, annex that a little bit. Not (laughs) a lot of price action this week. (laughs) Sorry Uh, for those of you who are retired and sitting on retirement accounts and watching the equities markets take a big price movement. Yeah, I'm not going to comment on that tongue-in-cheek because that's brutal. Well, let's jump into the metals first because here's a day where the equities markets are down immensely and gold is sitting up a little bit so acting as the hedge that it is but the whole week in general what transpired so from a purely charting standpoint i mean you were expecting to see a bounce in gold and we mentioned this last week right we were expecting to come into low end level in the low 1800s which we did in fact we got a little bit below about 1788 i was fiddling around with some fib levels here trying to pick good kind of start and stop points. I mean, stop points are easy. That's the last high. The start points, one thing you like is when I talk about kind of short-term, mid-term, long-term pricing levels in the metals, support and resistance, and playing around with that a little bit. So what I'm finding is probably my best medium-term starting level would be this last little bottom we put in before we had the breakout move back in 2019 that actually pushed us above the ceiling that we had in gold for about five years there. So when we finally broke out above into the 1300s. So looking at that up into the high, we're looking at around 1788 for a 382 FIB retracement, which was also your short term. I'm pretty confident in my starting point on the short term because that's pretty easy. That just goes back to last August. Also your short term 786, which is a very deep retracement. But the nice thing about gold is we've still yet to put in a lower low. So I know it feels like we've had a lot of down movement recently in gold because we have. I mean, we're talking about going from 2000 down to sub 1800 just over the last couple months. But we got to remember a few months prior to that, we were at 1680. So you're looking at pretty massive ranges that gold can trade in here. And it could be anywhere between those two numbers before you would argue any type of significant breakout one way or the other. So I think the name of the game here going forward is volatility. And I think we'll definitely talk more about volatility when we talk about equities here in a few, because the equity market is taking a pretty drastic beating again today on Wednesday, down significantly across the board. So the gold investor, though, needs to be inspired and encouraged here by you saying increased volatility. That's okay. That could be to the upside too listener. It doesn't have to mean that your gold is going to come down significantly further. It could. But Miles, I appreciate your guidance because those are really important numbers for me to see gold bounce off of as I go to educate and inform my clients. And the fact that we came down below that 1800 and we said, look, back up the truck there, that's served a great purpose. It may not hold. But you have to be reminded of 2008 and 2020 when the equities markets were retracing aggressively. We hit a bear market both of those times. And gold initially came down pretty aggressively and silver came down real aggressively. This is a replay of that. So yes, it's a hedge. 72% of the time you're going to have a non-correlation between gold and the equities markets like today is. And that's great. But eventually gold stops, it reverses, and it starts to climb as the equities try to find a support level that ends up being much, much lower. Right. And I know everybody around here kind of makes fun of me for being the curmudgeon. I'm not. I just, I don't get excited when gold goes up or down. It's a number that is what it is. And I appreciate you pointing that out because I think that's an important fact. The volatility in the precious metals market is what is going to move the precious metals market. My encouragement to our listeners is that we don't make decisions based on volatility because we've already made that decision. We let the rest of the market panic, and that's what ends up supporting and building your portfolio that you made based on logic and reason. So that's why we take the time to go through the chart. So I appreciate you bringing that up because volatility and panic is generally pretty good for hedge assets. We're seeing it in the US dollar right now. It's also good for ratio fluctuations. Absolutely. Right? And we're seeing a lot of that. So you can have wins when it feels like you're losing. So I just look at it this way. Gold's up 100 bucks since last August. Not bad. What, 6 7% in less than a year? 
Who cares that it went to 2100? It'll get there again, and I ain't worried about it. So gold looks very strong and continues to do so if we get another pullback. I bought some gold last week. I had some clients pick up some last week at that sub-1800 price, and maybe we get another good entry point. I know Robert's always looking for solid entry points to keep building up his position and his client's positions because we know with what's going on on the other side of this conversation – we know where gold is going in the long run. So I think gold investors need to be optimistic here. I know that you guys are. I know that we want the price of gold to go up on a consistent basis. Just zoom the chart out a little bit. That's all I'm asking you to do. And I don't know how you couldn't be optimistic. Well, especially in this strong dollar environment. Can we talk a little bit about that? Because there is a direct correlation there. People are asking, why is gold going down when inflation is up? It's because of this 20-year high in the dollar. But it's showing a little bit of vulnerability here, is it not? Right. Well, the 20-year high in the dollar is the 20-year high in the dollar relative to other currencies. So you're asking, why is the dollar going up during inflation? It's compared to what? Well, all the other currencies, sure. But compared to our own domestic purchasing price, not even close. Right. It's the weakest dollar we've had in my entire life, by far as far as purchasing power goes. And we all know that incomes aren't keeping up with it either. Yeah, gold's not at a 20-year low with a dollar at a 20-year high. Gold's not even at a nine-month low. Right, exactly. So that's very, very encouraging. So in terms of your expectations and what we need to see dollar-wise, do you see that happening in the short term? I hate to put you on the spot, but in terms of gold moving up and having an opportunity to get legs, do we not need to see that U.S. dollar weaken further? Well, we know the Fed isn't flinching yet. I nope. mean, they're still expecting to raise interest rates. They're sticking to their guns thus far, which to me means the equities market, there hasn't been enough damage yet for them to pull out. And eventually, we believe they're going to. Now, maybe we're proven wrong. We talked about Volcker and Greenspan and the differences last week. Maybe we're proven wrong. Maybe they do have the guts to just dig in and hold the line no matter what. I don't think so. I think it's going to be baby steps. They said this week, Powell did anyway, he won't hesitate to raise rates above neutral if needed. Well, nobody knows where the neutral rate is. They're raising rates substantially here, but... He also said the economy is well positioned to withstand a tighter policy. Right. So that's doubling down. He says you need growth to slow so supply can catch up. Get prepared, everybody, for the economy to slow down further. If they're trying to slow the economy so supply can catch up, that's not healthy. That's recession stuff on top of inflation. And they're talking about remaining focused on getting inflation down to 2%. Remember, too, that that's written in. 2% inflation means you're losing... $2,000 on every 100000 that you have saved every year if they get to their goal. It's just that right now you're losing closer to about 13000 Yeah, not only that. I mean, if we're looking at 20-year highs in the dollar value, we're definitely not looking at 20-year highs in the interest rate either. So adding 50 basis points to zero feels like a lot, but in the grand scheme of things, it's still 50 basis points. We're not looking at 6, 7, 8, 9, 10% interest rates at this point. And who knows what ends up happening, the shellacking the equities market takes at that point if we see that type of movement. And gold would be very strong as far as purchasing power goes in that type of scenario because the deflationary dollar would cause the type of recession that I think people are very concerned about or hopefully not, but maybe a full-blown depression. And anything of value in that type of depression becomes tradable at that point. So I think it's just a matter of time. You know, you brought up the 2008 market crash. A lot of the decline in gold was obviously caused by the leverage that we saw in the futures and options market at that time. I'm actually kind of surprised that we've only seen gold come down uh, a fraction of what the equities markets have done this year, which tells me that the leverage in the markets, the commodity markets today are, is significantly lower than it was 10, 12 years ago I agree. as a percentage. And we all know what ended up happening once that leverage has worked its way out of the system and the response of the average person to the volatility we were talking about a minute ago came into the metals market and caused gold to go from six, 700 up to 2000 in a very short period of time and took silver from seven bucks up to 50. So all of these things are tied together. Now, they're not going to happen on a day-to-day -day basis. And I know that's probably the most common question we get, right? Dollars down today, why isn't gold up today? 
equities are down today. Why isn't the dollar up today? That's because it takes time for these things to work their way through the system. So you've really got to zoom the chart out. You've got to look at the bigger picture here and pay attention to what's happening over the next 9, 12, 18 months. What's the Fed going to do? How's the dollar going to respond? What's happening in other countries that affects the international purchasing power of the dollar compared to the domestic purchasing power of the dollar? And is gold going to follow suit? And when it decides not to, what's the catalyst that's going to cause people to move into the precious metals market because of the volatility and the fear and the panic of losing out of the equities market that they have been? So what about the white metals? We haven't even touched on those yet today. Let's touch on those and then let's wrap this thing up a little bit on some of that macro that you were talking about. So silver is following gold. Silver actually put in a lower low, getting below the late 2021 low, uh, around $22. Got down actually just under 21, and we bounced back up a little bit. We're at about 21.40 right now. So silver is acting a lot like gold as a currency hedge right now, not as an industrial metal. We know that because it's acting like a more volatile gold. Platinum, on the other hand, has actually been up ever since it hit bottom. You know, we, we mentioned this kind of triple bottom that Platinum put in right at its 618 FIB at around 909, 910. And it actually looks like it's starting to climb. So I think Platinum is acting as an industrial metal where my concern there is because of this interest rate concern and how that's working its way into the equities market and then eventually the consumer market, you're going to start seeing some of these raw materials start to rise in price again. And I think we may be seeing that in platinum. So I'll say it again for the next time and over the last three years. I haven't been right yet, but one of these days I will be. Broke clocks right, uh, what, two times a day? So hopefully I'll be right at least one time a day. Broken uh, clock? Broken clock. Yeah, I just said broke clock. Yeah. Yeah, that's because I, I talk right. Oh, Yeah. okay. That's my North Carolina coming out. You'll have to forgive me. <laughs> so broke clock over here still says that platinum's got to play catch up. I totally agree. I'm still doubling down on the platinum piece. That's a part of every portfolio for me in storage accounts. And unfortunately, we don't have price stability in the economy to allow that to be a little bit more predictive. And price stability is the bedrock of any economy. And that's certainly not what we're experiencing now. And the equities markets are screaming that. No market, no index really knows where to settle here between Fed decisions, between national and international economics and economies in general, monetary policy, all of those things are unknowns, and you still have shutdowns in China from COVID that's still an unknown. It's still having this ripple effect. So keep your seatbelt on, keep your gold positions. I'd be adding here to all of them. And again, be encouraged. The equities markets lost 5% today. Your gold position held steady. Yeah, I don't really know what to show with some equity charts just because it's a whole lot of really big red lines. So the equities market definitely took a shellacking today. And the transports put in a significant lower low today. Uh, and we talk about Dow theory and how the transports tend to lead the industrials when you're in a major direction, which we think that major direction long term is down for the equities market. So it is a big deal, not just that everything went down 5%, but from a charting perspective, the transports broke through a very significant floor today. Well, that's going to do it for this week's Golden Rule Radio. Thank you again for tuning in and listening. If you liked what you heard, you can hit the subscribe button, ring the bell to get notified of new videos coming out every week. You can find more info on our website at McIlvaney.com. We're on Twitter at ICA Gold or Facebook at McIlvaney Financial. As always, if you'd like to speak with one of the advisors here at McIlvaney ICA about your personal precious metals portfolio, you can give us a call at 800-525-9556. Thanks for listening. Have a great week.